Welcome to the President and CEO Focus on the Middle Market podcast series, where President and CEO founder Paul Stuckel discusses middle market issues with business leaders from across the nation. Today, Lori Bruner, President of Mainstream Management, sits in for Paul and speaks with Robin Weiner, President and Founding Partner of Get Real Health, a leading provider of healthcare technology for providers and consumers, about how technology is revolutionizing the healthcare space. It seems to us that with rising healthcare costs and uh, Obamacare, that healthcare in itself is on the tops of minds of CEOs and businesses today. And your business is really revolutionizing healthcare for both providers and patients. Can you share a little bit about Get Real Health and your work? Get Real Health has been, was founded in 2001. Um, what we do and what we found a really need for is using technology for healthcare. And um, with the new, new pieces of Obamacare and all the different areas coming out, we really saw our growth in that area. So what we wanted to do is use our technology. I, I, my partner is a phenomenal technologist. So you take that technology and look at the problem of healthcare and how we might be able to help bring it into that forefront of using technology to really be able to connect the provider with the patient and the patient with the provider. We're all about making that connection. And there's a real need out there in the world for that. When we do things as patients just by ourselves and we're not able to share that with a provider, the provider is not able to make really strong decisions. What we do at Get Real Health is actually build that bridge between the two areas. So, so the provider is able to send information about the patient to the patient at home, and the patient is able to take information from their home and bring it back in. So what are some of the key legislative actions that have really been driving your business? Uh, uh, certainly there are um, uh, pages of mandates within Obamacare, but which ones <laughs> um, tend to, um, you know, are, are the focal points for Get Real Health? So we are actually um, something called the Office of National Coordinator. And through there, there's a lot of mandates on really – Taking Right now, as we all know, for years, when you went into your doctor's office, they would take a paper file out and write all your information down. They take that paper file and put it back away. And that paper file got bigger and bigger over the years, right? And then you wanted to get that paper file, and you would have to pay a bunch of money, and it would take weeks to get that paper file, and all you would get is a piece of paper, all these papers. So... Um, a few years ago, the first piece of and it really, you know, everybody calls it Obamacare, but it actually was started by George Bush um, before he left office. Is to really start to mandate taking that those records, which are a paper, and converting them to electronic. So taking it off the paper, putting it into a basic computer system, so you can do different pieces with that. So that's the first piece that really started to move and. They did incentives to the doctors to be able to get their, you know, to, to be able to go ahead and get them to get those that electronic, to get the paperwork electronically. So that's one side of it. So that's what's called the EMRs, electronic management systems, um, electronic management records. That's really the first piece of it. So now all the doctors are actually using tablets and computers to take that in that information in. The next phase is something called, and that's meaningful use stage one. The next demand, which is happening right now as we're speaking, is called Meaningful Use Stage 2. And with Meaningful Use Stage 2 is now the doctors are starting to get all that records electronically. But, you know, that patient still wants their records. They want to be able to see them and be able to do something with them. The next phase of that is actually taking that electronic copy and pushing it down to the patients. And that's where we play. So we are actually the patient side of that. So we get it from the doctor's office, now that's electronic, and push it to the patients. And that's the main date, uh, mandate right now. The next one to come out in the next year or two was actually be able to push that information back up to the doctors, completing that, that circle. So what services, um, types of services, technology, um, can patients uh, and providers access uh, through your company? So um, we have something, a product called Instant PHR. And instant PHR is, but PHR stands as personal health record. So the services that we're doing is setting up a really dynamic site, and it's is not just an, a one site; it can be many, multiple different sites. Some of them are focused in on a chronic disease, maybe you have diabetes, or maybe heart disease, or even mental illness, or some of them are just, you know, I just want to keep healthy, and that's really important to start to track those things. 
So what our system will do is go out, reach out, grab that electronic health records from your doctor, either through an e- their EMR service, the electronic medical health record service, or even what's something called an HIE, which is health exchanges, which are big databases all the hospitals are joining. We'll pull that information down for the patient and not just show it to them, but also give them tools to start to track what's going on at home, have graphs, have um, information, cool tips about what's going on with them, or even to the point now that we can take that data and let's say I've got breast cancer stage two and I, I want information. I don't want information about smoking sensation or diabetes. I don't have that. I have breast cancer. We're at the point now that we can literally go in to the database and pull out information related to that patient. So really making this patient, this site about that patient, giving them tools and tasks, a care plan, telling them what their next steps are, reminders to take their medicine, or even alerts if they're, if they're getting in trouble, maybe their blood pressure has gone up or their sugar levels are out of control. We'll have to have alerts, and that information will now flow back to the doctors. So that's what we're all about. We're all really engaging that patient by giving them information from the providers and then engaging that provider by giving them patient, information from the patient. You know, what's changing in the world, which I think it's really exciting, is we talked about this meaningful use piece of actually getting that information. But what's really changing is, is the way the providers and insurance companies and our government are looking at healthcare in general. What's happened with healthcare in the past is every time you can pay for, basically pay for service, right? They come in, you pay for them. What, and that's fine. But what's the newest trend, and not only here in the United States, but overseas too, is to actually take a look at what that doctor is doing for that patient. So we're looking at really more of the overall health of that patient. So they're going to get paid for keeping that patient healthy or getting them healthy uh, along with the, the services. So instead of just, you know, boom, I'll see you, 10 minutes, boom, they're actually getting engaged with that patient. But that's really difficult to do if all you're seeing is that one visit a year with that patient or every three or four months. What they need to know is what's going on at home, because that's where we all mess up, right? I mean, <laughs> that's where we're uh, having a little bit too much salt. Wagon. and Yeah, you yeah. better believe it, right? They need to be able to see that you're doing that, and that's happening, so they can get you in to get you back on track. And so that's one big, large piece. And even to the point that now there's new mandates called readmission management. And what that means is if you've been in the hospital at the beginning, uh, let's say you've been in the hospital, you're in there for a heart attack, and the doctor's going to, you're there, you get your treatments, and then they'll let you, you know, send you home. They need to monitor you for at least 30 days because if you reappear at the hospital with the same exact problem that you went into, Medicaid and Medicare don't, does not have to pay that hospital. So now they're incentivizing that hospital to actually keep track of you and keep you healthy. So there's really this new drive in the, in the, in the way people are thinking, new policy, not just give them medicine. Why don't we try to get them healthy? What a concept. 2001, and you all have been on a tremendous growth track <laughs> over that period of time. And I'm sure you know, you've implemented some very successful strategies that have really helped you all profitably be expand. And, of course, you have the um, uh, fortunate position uh, to be participating in a, in a very um, growing marketplace. But when you look back on your dozen or so years of uh, building and growing your business, are there some uh, thoughts that you can share that have really worked well, that have supported your uh, consistent expansion? Absolutely. So, you know, we started, we uh, we did it the old-fashioned way. We bootstrapped. So we haven't ever taken any funding. Uh, we might be doing that because we're expanding so fast, we're going to need a little support. But we really had to do it the old-fashioned way and really make smart decisions as we went through. Um, if you came to our office, uh, we're sitting around IKEA desk and um, chairs, and we don't have anything too fancy, you know, we have fun colors on the walls, but we really watch our money really carefully and make sure we're making the spend where we need to. And where we think is the most important place, and I think the only reason we're where we are now, is we spend it on people. Find people smarter than yourself and surround yourself with them. And that's pretty easy for me. So, <laughs> you know, find that 
that incredible person and have them come on and really expand the company that way. And I would think that was probably one of the smartest things we've done as we've grown. Um, the other thing, too, is, you know, we started as a professional services company um, building technology for all kinds of different industries, but always kept our eye on what we might want to do down the road. And one of the things that we thought about when we first started the company, we're pretty good technologists. Wouldn't it be cool to take our technology and do something um, good with it? And so we were always kept our eye on that goal. And in mm-hmm. 2007, when we kind of rolled into working with Microsoft Health Vault, which is uh, a cloud database for healthcare, that was our first real step into the healthcare world. And we said, oh, my gosh, I think this is what we want to be. And that's when we started very focused on our technology and what we're doing and on our goals of really focusing on how can we be the best of what we do in this area. And mm-hmm. kind of focusing into that, uh, I think that was probably really good. And it's not it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not, you know, mm-hmm. it's a lot of hard work, a lot of uh, uh, putting on the, the big pants and holding your breath a little bit because we were self-funded. We had to do it on our own. Um, mm-hmm. So that's a little bit more difficult, but it also made us really focus on what we were doing and mm-hmm. making the right decisions. The other thing, too, is not to be bogged down, I think, with clients that are not supportive to you. Sometimes you have to make a hard decision. Is You have to look and really make sure that you're, you're surrounding yourself with people that can be positive influences on how the way the business grows. And uh, that's sometimes a hard decision, but we've done that, too. And um, I we've been very, very lucky on the other side of the house, on the business side, of, of connecting with the right bank, the right accounting firm, the right lawyers. Um, we decided to go with a local bank here in Rockville, Maryland, and um, probably I would say one of my best decisions, instead of going with one of the very large banks, a small bank is able to know your business and know you. And when that tough time comes and you're, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, they're mm-hmm. they're standing shoulder to shoulder to you. Yeah. With the large so corporations, service. yeah, the large corporations can't do that. And um, we are, I think that was probably one of the best things we did. Capital Bank here in Rockville has really been such a phenomenal partner to us and has helped us, you know, jump those little bridges or the breaking the bridges <laughs> or provide the bridge um, for us. So I think that's the other side of it. So there's, it's the people, it's making the smart decisions as, as well as you can. You're going to have some falls, but try the best you can. The right clients, real supportive clients. Oh, I've got, and, and then, of course, the, the right um, business things. And then, honestly, for our business, is really connecting to the right partners. Our partners are Microsoft, a company called Caradigm, which is a combination of Microsoft and GE, um, TELUS, um, Health Solutions, the largest telecommunication company up in Canada. Um, really, these great, large, great partners in building that relationship and being able to help them take you to market. Because we're small, sometimes working with somebody big will help a little bit. So how does the business uh, set itself apart? There, It's a $250 billion global market for health IT, and it's a very competitive sector. What are you doing uniquely um, that differentiates your approach uh, with technology and your customers um, from all the other players in the sector? It is a, a large business, uh, world business, and it's growing like crazy. The one thing we had to really look at that, and it's it's really important that you keep your eye on that. Um, we focus on one area and partner with people who are very good in the other areas. So our focus is patient engagement. Very important that we're all about the patient and connecting them with the provider. And I say that a lot because that's really our niche, where we play. Our competitors, there's a lot of other competitors in that world, absolutely. But what we did is most of those have an application, a website that does this. We made a a real big decision when we built our product, Instant PHR, to make it as a platform. And by making it as a platform, we have over 200 different widgets or little parts. And taking those parts, you can build any kind of health application you want. It's very flexible. You can can take the widgets. Like Think about Legos, right? (laughs) We all had Legos growing up, or our kids did. Right. They take Legos, and you can build a, a building, you can build a bridge, you can build all kinds of things, it, but it's the same Legos. You can take those Legos and make any kind of health application with those Legos. And guess what? Your your clients can actually go ahead in the back end and move them around, too. It doesn't take a developer. So mm-hmm. we made something very simple, very flexible, 
Again, we put localization in it, knowing that it's going to be in, it has to be in all kinds of different languages, because that's what our patients are. They they speak different languages. Being able to do it, and then we white labeled it, meaning that we can put any look and feel on the front end, and make it for our our uh, our hospitals or doctors' offices. I know I, as a patient, I feel a lot more comfortable going to something that has my hospital logo on the top. If it says MedStar Health on there from uh, or Georgetown Hospital System on that, I feel that this is being protected by Georgetown. This is something Georgetown believes in. So we built it in a way that can actually layer it on top of it. And then the other thing to, to keep us, we really, the partnership, so that's our platform, this really flexible, cool platform. And by the way, we can get something up in four to six weeks, not four to six months. So it's fast to market, fast. Yep. You've said, uh, it's interesting that you've said in the past that you've really wanted to do something that actually meant something in the world. And it does sound like leading your business, uh, you've, you've also taken on a personal cause. Um, and it sounds like it's a perfect opportunity to blend business leadership with a real mission and purpose. Absolutely. Um, a couple of things. Being a mother, um, I'm a mother of two uh, young boys. Um, it's really important for me to be able to see that they are given the best medical care in the world. And uh, I think by bringing both pieces together is really important. But I think probably the biggest driver was my father um, had a liver transplant a couple years ago. And the reason he had to have a liver transplant is not because he drank. He gave up drinking years ago and never been a drink, big drinker. He, had a, he lost his liver because nobody was monitoring his medicine. And the medicine he was on blew out his thyroid and then blew out his liver. And th- thank God that um, he was going. He was able to get a liver transplant at Cleveland Clinic, or he wouldn't be with us today. And if that doesn't remind you every day that we need to have what's going on with the patient connect to the doctor and the doctor to the patient, it reminds me every day when I see him. Because if they had done that, he would not be having to go. Had, would never have gone through the liver transplant, and wouldn't be dealing with the medication. Now he's on tons of medication, so that medication will affect other parts of his body, his kidneys. He now has gout, things like that that he would never. And this is a very active man. He still works for FedEx. You know, he's an executive. For, he's an executive of FedEx. This man does not like to sit around. I mean. He he cracks me up because, of course, he has a liver transplant. I go up there to Cleveland to, to see him, and he's walking around the, the hospital. I'm like, really? Because he's just that kind of guy. <laughs> I'm like, Ma, really? <laughs> no. um, so he doesn't give up, yeah. and he yeah. forced himself through it. But if he if he wasn't that person, he wouldn't be here today. And it's all because mm-hmm. nobody was managing his medicine. So I'm a little passionate about it. Be sure to check back for future editions of the President and CEO Focus on the Middle Market podcast series. Thanks for listening.